easily been one each, and all yes. of a sudden it's two nothing. So often that happens in games, doesn't it? And of course, that was it the does. real turning point. But uh, Peter Heatherson was outstanding today, wasn't he? He's a tremendous engine, as they yeah. say in the game. He really works awfully hard in midfield. Well, he's an experienced player. You know, he came there from Falkirk, and he was a bit disillusioned there. He's getting first team football there, and the appetite's back, isn't it? The aggression's there. You're right, he's got a good engine in him. He likes to come back and defend. He's there in midfield. Always wants to be involved. The Spielmacher, as, as they say in Germany, he always wants to be involved with the little one-twos and that. He's always on the end of them. And I think he, he gives you great options. He's always available. If you're struggling with the ball, then give it to That's Peter Heatherson. Just a wee bit too far in front of him. But uh, there he's, he comes back, look, robs him of the ball in his own half, prepare to go forward again. He did that for most of the match. He's a smashing player to have around. He's a right player's player, as I say. He'll always be involved. The things are not going so well, just give him the ball and he'll, he'll certainly use it well. Very rarely gives it away. And that's important, I think, when you're in that division. Links up so well with players. They're offside there, but smashing player. Impressive performance. First against second in the first division, not to mention it being the five derby too. Pride and promotion at stake in this one. Scott Leach came close for Dunfermline after 14 minutes. Dunfermline were the better side in the first half, although Lindsay Hamilton had to look sharp to save at the feet of Gordon Diel. No goals, though, at the interval. Inspired, perhaps, by his own words at half-time, Wraith player boss Jimmy Nicol made the breakthrough on the hour mark, direct from the corner. Dunfermline battled back, Davy Moyes' header in the 73rd minute, just over. But then Wraith Rovers got a second. Great work and a defence-splitting pass by Craig Brewster with Jimmy Nicol there to finish it off. It was proving to be his day. With the Wraith fans whistling for time up, Dunfermline unlocked the home defence, but Hamish French was denied by Gordon Arthur, and it ended 2-0 to Wraith Rovers. Air United threatened the Wraith goal within the first minute at Somerset Park. Player manager Jimmy Nicol making a vital clearance from John Trainer's shot, with goalkeeper Gordon Arthur beaten. Then Nicol popped up at the other end to fire a shot just over after good leading up work by Diel and Brewster. Those two strikers combined again for Wraith's next chance. Brewster's corner to the head of Diel but over the top under pressure from airkeeper Cammy Duncan. And they were at it again in 35 minutes. The roles reversed this time. Diel providing a perfect cross and Brewster unchallenged should have scored. Air rallied just before half time. The ball going from one manager to another. Jimmy Nichols' header out, taken on the volley by George Burley, but ending up wide. The home side passed up an even better chance just after the break. Greg Hood's header down, finding trainer at the far post, his effort coming back off the stand roof. Paul Burke and Tommy Walker then combined to give Stevie Bryce a shooting chance, but he was just off target. There were a couple of scares for Ayr towards the end, handball by Heatherston not spotted, but Shorten's pass back to Duncan ended up with Wraith Rovers winning an indirect free kick. The battle plan formed, Wraith Rovers went for it, Brewster's fierce effort deflected just wide. One more chance to come, Nichols' corner met by Sean Dennis, but Duncan made the save. Even though it was nil-nil, uh, there was plenty of exciting moments. There was chances at both ends. Um, you know, and I think um, the sort of team we did out with a lot of youngsters and uh, people who weren't regulars, um, I think they, they, they competed well. And certainly Rafe Rovers knew they were in the game. No, we're still waiting for a few teams to, to drop points about us, you know. Uh, but like I said, if I'd have been anywhere else, I would have been bitterly disappointed. But we we'll never do anything here for some reason. But next week it's in our own hands. It's cut and dried next week, no messing about it. If we do a job against Hamilton, then nobody can do anything about it. Wraith fans out in force at Douglas Park anticipating a promotion party. But they were silenced just seven minutes in by Hamilton. The goal fashioned on the right, then worked infield to Kevin McKee. He shot through a ruck of players and passed Gordon Arthur. Wraith rallied after that early setback, Craig Brewster pouncing on a loose ball, but hitting the outside of the post after 12 minutes.
then another escape for the Hamilton defence. Again, the ball not properly cleared, but Gordon Diel's shot was well saved by Rab McCulloch. Rovers went in a goal down and must have thought it wasn't going to be their day when Diel got a flick on Dennis's header, only to be foiled again by McCulloch with some help from his defence. Hamilton should then have gone two up. A swift break, Colin Cram round Arthur, and Paul McDonald headed wide with the goal gaping. He threw himself into the net in frustration. If McDonald felt bad then, imagine his feelings three minutes later as Wraith equalised. Gordon Diel showing how to accept a chance when it's served up in a plate. Hamilton stormed upfield though and went ahead when Gary Clark headed down McDonald's cross, the ball sliding under Arthur and over the line. Back came Wraith. Diel allowed the time and space to get in half a volley, but it went wide with McCulloch beaten. There were seven minutes to go when Wraith did draw level. Craig Brewster's proved before how dangerous he can be from long range. A left foot drive saving a point. As full time approached, a message came for the Wraith fans. Did they listen? Not a bit of it. Wraith still not officially promoted, and Jimmy Nicholl trying in vain to point that out. Still, there's always next week. Wraith Rover's mascot for the potential title-winning day was 22-month-old Jonathan McStay, son of fullback John, although Daddy is not his favourite player. That honour belongs to Gordon DL. Kickoff was delayed for 10 minutes to allow the fans, already in celebration mood, to get into the ground. One point was needed for promotion, victory over Dumbarton, and a point dropped by Dunfermline at Clyde Bank would see Rovers go up as champions. With seven minutes gone, Colin Cameron intercepted well and powered his way towards the penalty area. But a timely challenge by Stephen Gow saw the ball break to keeper Ian McFarlane. It wasn't all one-way traffic in the early stages. Dumbarton's John Boyd forced a good save from Gordon Arthur. But Wraith Rovers deservedly took the lead in the 27th minute. Peter Heatherston's cross partially cleared. Craig Brewster gathered, got the target in his sights and let fly. The party was now in full swing. Just over a minute later, Rovers were awarded a penalty when Gordon Diel was judged to have been taken down by Dumbarton skipper Paul Martin. He received his marching orders. Gordon Diel took the kick and netted. But the celebrations were cut short when referee Bill Crombie disallowed the goal apparently for encroachment into the penalty area. The kick had to be retaken and this time McFarlane saved Diel's shot. So 1 0 to Wraith at half time. But three minutes after the break, Wraith Rovers did claim a second. Player manager Jimmy Nickel made the running down the left, crossed into the box. Brewster knocked it down for DL. His shot was saved, but Craig Brewster was there to tap home the rebound. There were no more goals in this game, but Clyde Banks' Craig Flanagan scored a crucial equaliser against Infermline at New Bowie two minutes from time. So that when the full time whistle went at Starks Park, the Wraith Rovers players and fans were celebrating both promotion and a first division championship win. A pitch invasion was inevitable. Wraith were into the Premier Division for the first time and they'd clinched the title with five games remaining. It was a superb achievement for the Kakodi club, the players and manager Jimmy Nicholl, much appreciated by the fans who succeeded in persuading their title winning heroes to come back out and soak them with the customary champagne. A great day at Starks Park. It was a big day for myself personally because uh, you know you, you 
played at decent clubs and at big games in the past, but it's a wee bit more personal, a wee bit more satisfying, you know. And uh, I'm just hoping it was a great day, you know, and I wish there was a lot more like that there to come in the future. I hope there is anyway. Well done to them. Well, now to our competition. The runaway winners of the first division were presented with their championship trophy. Scottish League Secretary Peter Donald was there to oversee proceedings as League Treasurer Eric Mitchell handed the trophy to race skipper Peter Heatherston. Mr Mitchell is a director of Cowden Bay, Wraith's opponents yesterday, and he had to suffer in the stand as Wraith put four past a side already relegated to the second division for next season. With the formalities over, Wraith can now concentrate on building towards next season and the challenge of the Premier League. There was just one... Thank you very much. Wraith Rovers' first game back in the top division against St Johnston will be preceded by the unfurling of the first division championship banner, the final act of a summer of celebrations. A second division club as recently as 1987, Wraith have come the St Johnston route to the top, emulating the Perth side by staying up is the hard bit. 41. Monday night in Kirkcaldy and a civic reception to mark Wraith Rovers' return to Scottish football's top flight. Players and management honoured by the District Council for bringing Premier League football to Starks Park for the first time. Before last season's First Division win, Wraith had last won a league title in 1949. In 1984, the Rovers' fortunes hit rock bottom with relegation to Scotland's football basement. But three seasons later, they were back in Division 1, and after three top five finishes in the intervening years, they were promoted to the Premier League as champions last season. The trophy presentation at Starks Park in April merely served to confirm what the rest of the league had known for six months. Wraith Rovers were champions and heading for the Premier League. Money's tight at Starks Park, though, and improvements to the ground before the visits of the likes of Rangers, Celtic and Hearts were a must. One end is being upgraded, the other a throwback to a bygone age, with ancient railway sleepers embedded in black ash, will have to wait. Fans will have to suffer this for at least another season. We're working on the south terracing at the moment. It will not be ready for Saturday, but we're still hopeful of having at least 600 people on that terracing. It should be completed within the next two weeks. Next season, we hope to start on the north end, the visited end, doing exactly the same thing. Inside, Wraith have spent thousands improving their corporate facilities, while outside on the training grounds, manager Jimmy Nicholl is hoping to secure some of the Craig Brewster transfer cash to strengthen his playing squad. Those in possession of the jerseys at the moment, though, will get their chance to prove themselves in the top division. Back in the Premier League again, no, there's nothing better for it. You know, you, that's what you want at the top, so I'm looking forward to it anyway. We've watched you training this morning. Everybody seems in a, in a great frame of mind. Is anybody thinking ahead to maybe January, February, when it could become a struggle, three going down? Yeah, I think everybody is, but they say it's a long way. And uh, we win on Saturday and hopefully that will set everything going for uh, the season. In the streets of Kirkcaldy, amongst the Wraith Rover supporters, the mood is generally one of guarded optimism. I was impressed with the standard they did in the first division, but they haven't bought anywhere this year, so they've got no chance. I hope they got on brilliantly, because they've done brilliant this last year. So I hope they get on really good. Well, hopefully they do, they'll do quite well because uh, they're a Kirkcaldy team and it's their first year in the Premier League, is that right? That's right. So hopefully they'll do quite well and we'll get some of the bigger teams coming across here and that. Pretty well. They've got DL. Even though they've lost Brewster, mm -hmm. they probably still do all right. Mm -hmm. They played well last season, but they're in against the big teams this time. Yeah, well, they beat Rangers before. They could do it again. This will sort the wheat from the chaff. There's no doubt about it. And our players, like I said, the back end of last season, He's the players that got us out of the first division and we're giving them a chance. And they know that, and I'll stand by that. And if they can't do it, for whatever reasons, then we'll have to look to see what happens during the season. But for the start of it, the fear of relegation and the fear of losing, going into a, a fresh new season, I, I just can't see why people think along them lines or even start talking like that. You know, maybe come next six, seven, eight games to go, certainly then the fear of relegation, and if it's hitting us, and it's hitting us hard and, and the facts are there, you're bottom of the table, then we can start looking at it. The final celebration of last season's success takes place at 5-3 to three tomorrow. At 3 o'clock, Wraith Rovers start the battle to finish ninth or better in the Premier League. Well, despite an injury scare in mid <laughs> Champions, we are the champions, we are the champions. 
Wraith Rovers celebrating their promotion to the top flight at the end of last season. During the summer, work's been going on off the field to get Starks Park ready for the Premier Challenge. But are the players ready for what lies ahead? The atmosphere and the feeling in the club is one that they're going to give it a real good go. They know they're going to be underdogs in games. They know they're going to be classed as favourites to get relegated right away. But that's the wee thing that kept us going last year where people said the bubble would burst and it didn't. And, but you always had that wee feeling you were trying to prove yourself and they're going to have to prove a lot of people this year that they're capable of going up and contesting them, the big boys. Not the most salubrious of surroundings for Wraith fans to start life in the Premier League. Ground reconstruction means they'll have to make do for now. One or two improvised with a view from home as the First Division Championship flag was unfurled at Starks Park. Wraith know it's going to be tough for them in the top drawer, and St Johnston underlined that by opening the scoring in 28 minutes. Martin Buglioni saw a shot saved by Tom Carson, but Paul Wright nipped in to score from the rebound. Wraith were level within nine minutes, player manager Jimmy Nicol orchestrating things from the free kick, flighting the ball in for Sean Dennis to claim his own little piece of history with their first ever Premier League goal. Gordon Diel was keen to open his Premier account, but he couldn't get a good enough connection on Ian McLeod's cross and the chance was missed. Then a moment of concern for the home side as George Magicci and Jimmy Nicol suffered an accidental clash of heads. Magicci took the brunt of it, and took no further part in the game. St Johnston new boy Paul Ramsey almost marked his debut with a goal in 58 minutes. Tom Carson foiled him with a fine save. And Carson was called into action again a couple of minutes later and the ball dropped invitingly for Gunny Torfesen to send in a volley. The keeper coped well with the effort. Wraith pressed forward next. Jimmy Nicol had a go from distance, but never really troubled Andy Rhodes. Saints were forced to play out time with 10 men after Tommy Turner was sent off. Rhodes making one last save from Colin Cameron to earn a point. Thistle looked for an early opening goal at Starts Park, Jerry Britton going close from Paul Kinnaird's cross. At the other end, Thistle keeper Craig Nelson must have been wondering what the players in front of him were doing as the ball came all the way through to Rovers' John McStay, but he was blocked just in time. But when the breakthrough came, it went the home side's way. Willie Jameson was judged to have fouled Colin Cameron and a free kick was awarded. Heatherston took it, Sean Dennis powered the header home. So Rovers won up, but Thistle's reply was immediate, and it stemmed from Nelson's long kick out. Grant headed on to Britton, who nipped in to score, but Tom Carson knows he should have done better on this occasion. There were chances at both ends after that. First Wraith player boss Jimmy Nicol had a typical blast from long range. Then Roddy Grant ran in on Jameson's cross and knocked it off the bar. Tierney couldn't get his header on target. That must have given Grant some confidence. As he was the first player to threaten in the second half, his shot flew just wide. But he was to be the next goal scorer in this game, cracking home Tierney's head flick to put the Jags 2-1 up. Wraith Rovers got back on level terms from the penalty spot. Cameron went down when Tierney challenged. The spot kick awarded. Gordon Diel scored and got his side right back in this match, although his gesture with the Rovers jersey didn't go down too well with the Thistle fans. 
The Thistle strike force went for one last goal effort. Britain having a goal, but he was just off target. He'd have rued that miss more had Nelson been beaten by Dennis's header. The keeper saved magnificently, the point shared, but the manager's with mixed feelings. I mean, them two lads up front for, for party certainly, well, certainly were a handful. The lads coped with it quite well, but again, I was disappointed with the goals. I uh, thought that the, the lack of commitment. Motherwell started this game as league leaders, but Wraith Rovers showed early on they were in no way overawed. Colin Cameron and Stephen Crawford combining well, and Cameron forcing a fine save from Steve Dykstra after 14 minutes. But it was Motherwell who took the lead five minutes later. Davy Cooper's free kick hooked into the net by Wraith's David Sinclair. The Fir Park side, full of confidence, came close to goal number two in the 32nd minute. Dougie Arnott's shot, touched over by Gordon Arthur for a corner. As half-time approached, Motherwell were awarded a penalty when Paul McGrillen was upended right on the edge of the box by Ronnie Coyle. McGrillen recovered, Coyle was booked and Rob McKinnon slotted home the penalty to give the home side a 2-0 lead at the break. Seven minutes into the second half, Davy Cooper tapped a free kick to Rob McKinnon. His effort was stopped by Arthur, but Paul McGrillan was in hand to stroke the ball into the net. 3-0 down, but Wraith Rovers hadn't given up the fight. Player manager Jimmy Nickel tried to claw his side back into the game. Dykstra denied him. The Kakodi side refused to give up, though. Even with only four minutes remaining, they put the Motherwell defence under pressure. And it paid dividends. Peter Heatherston chased unchallenged to collect on the right. He slipped the ball to Colin Cameron, who laid it off for Ronnie Coyle to fire in a great goal from 20 yards. 3-1. But Motherwell restored the three-goal advantage a minute from time. Davy Cooper's corner headed on by Ali Graham, and Steve Kirk there to nod the ball over the line. Motherwell 4, Wraith Rovers 1, and well, two points clear at the top of the Premier table. In my opinion... There were only four minutes on the clock at Starks Park when Dundee United took the lead. Great control by Billy McKinley, matched by the shot which beat Tom Carson. United had the better of the early stages, nearly catching the home side out when John Clark's quickly taken free kick reached the head of Gary Bolan, but Carson made the save. The Wraith keeper almost committed a cardinal sin just before half-time, conceding an indirect free kick after catching what was ruled to be a pass back from John McStay. From the kick, Carson redeemed himself with a tremendous one-handed save from Billy McKinley. Wraith tried a new formation up front, relegating Gordon DL to the bench, and it was his replacement, Jason Dare, who missed a great chance at the far post for McStay's free kick. Then the same player came closer, with a long-range effort which bounced back off the underside of the crossbar. Wraith's perseverance merited an equaliser, and they got it right at the death. There were literally seconds left to play when Cameron rolled the ball invitingly into the path of Jimmy Nicholl and he'd have to go back a long way in an illustrious career to find a sweeter strike than that, and a point saver to boot. Yeah, the fact they kept it low, yeah, that's a wee bonus to start. I don't score tap-ins, I don't get close enough to goal, and uh, I didn't realise it. it was on the final whistle, you know, so we Mickey Cameron sold me a ball, and the only thing I could do was just hit it and hope. And it's turned out I've struck it all right, and uh, it's turned out it was 27 yards, so I've had one of the young lads <laughs> pace it out already. Ah, just take what you can get out of this game, you know, it's great. Those who didn't have tickets for Celtic's visit to Starks Park still managed to get a decent, if somewhat precarious, seat for the match. Jimmy Nichols' men threatened early. Crawford crossed from the right, but Jason Dare just failed to get on the end of it. But Celtic went one up when Charlie Nicholas nipped in to head home Dubcek's free kick. 
Wraith Rovers tried to hit back immediately. Heddleston went it alone down the right, his cross just inches over. But Celtic hit Rovers again in the half hour. Collins cross cleared at first, but Grant and then McIverney set up Nicholas for his and his side second. All credit to Rovers, they tried yet again to get back into this match. This time McStay's shot was touched over the top by Bonner. Nicholas might have grabbed his hat-trick right in half-time. His curling shot from the left just wide of target. Into the second half, Rovers not dead yet. Cameron ran into space on the right, but is shot agonisingly wide of Bonner's far post. Celtic then threw Andy Payton into the action in place of McIverney, and it paid immediate dividends. Collins ran through in the left, and the substitute striker knocked in the third. It was over now for Rovers, but they still battled on and were rewarded when Cameron scored a consolation goal. Nicholas again came close to his hat-trick. O'Neill with some good build-up work. Grant eventually found Charlie, who created space for himself before shooting narrowly wide. Comeback man Tony Mowbray was in the wars again towards the end. He saw the game out, though. Celtic weren't finished, though. Peyton grabbed his second and his side's fourth in the dying moments. The Parkhead strikers clearly know the route to go these days. Yeah, I think I spoke to you before the season. A young Dundee fan alone with his thoughts prior to the visit of Wraith Rovers. And there wasn't much to cheer him up as it turned out in this one. Dundee did create the first clear chance. Gary McEwen's pass springing Paul Ritchie on the left. The low cross in for Billy Dodds, but the striker could only find the side netting. Wraith's lively young attack was to prove a constant danger. The early evidence of that coming from Steve Crawford. It took a good block by Jim Duffy to foil him here. Fullback Steve Frail's been playing well for the home side. His attacking qualities were well to the fore as he beat both there and then Robotham on the way to the line. Farningham got in the end of his cutback, the ball coming off Dennis for a corner. Then Frail almost opened the scoring. Carson losing Pittman's cross under pressure from Adamchik and Farningham, the header narrowly wide. Wraith came back into it, Nickel releasing Dare. His cross found Crawford at the far post, but he couldn't make the crucial connection. No goals at half-time. Billy Dodds caused problems for Wraith just after the restart, but Robotham got back to take the sting out of the Dundee striker's shot. The goal when it came was special. Peter Heddleston started the move, sending Crawford away on the right, then taking the return on the volley. That was worth the admission money alone. The goal gave Wraith confidence. Nicol and Cameron setting up Crawford, who made space for himself before firing past. Then Nicol created another chance. Cameron only foiled by a great tackle by McGowan, but Wraith got the win and justified their belief in playing football. That's the most important thing we've got in the club. The manager believes the way the game should be played is on the carpet, playing football. In every game we've played this season, we've done it. Some people say it doesn't get your results. I think we proved that wrong today, coming here and keep playing the way we believe the game should be played. And it's got the result that we were after, and I would say, yeah, definitely we've got to keep playing football. Great Rovers gave as good as they got in the opening half out of this match, although it was Aberdeen who were first to pose a real threat. Joe Miller squaring for Ian Jess, who made space for himself before firing just wide in the 19th minute. Wraith came even closer two minutes later. Jimmy Nicholl put Colin Cameron away down the left, 
And his cross was struck first time by Jason Dare. The ball cannoned off the underside of the bar with Selders beaten. It was the Dons who took the lead in the 31st minute. Paul Kane winning possession twice before finding Duncan Shearer, who drilled the ball past Carson for his ninth goal of the season. Shearer continued to pose the Wraith defence problems and was prepared to have a go from any distance. This volley on the turn, though, was saved by Carson. With five minutes to go to the break, Aberdeen had the visitors' defence in a flap. Shearer headed the ball across goal. Joe Miller found a target, but Ronnie Coyle cleared off the line. Aberdeen well in command and leading 1-0 at half-time, but Wraith Rovers showed early in the second half they hadn't given up the fight. Colin Cameron's header forcing a save from Theo Snelders. The Dons went two up in the 56th minute. Shearer found Connor, whose low cross was swept into the net by Ian Jess. Simple, but very effective. Aberdeen's third goal caught the Wraith defence flat-footed. McStay's clearance was headed by Jess to Lee Richardson, who tried his luck from 25 yards. Tom Carson didn't see it until it was too late. Aberdeen now in top gear and Richardson made it 4-0 six minutes from time. Shearer's cross caused the initial danger. Joe Miller cut the ball back and Richardson lashed it into the net. Ray Throwers scored the proverbial consolation goal two minutes from time. Snelders palming the corner only as far as Sean Dennis who hit the target. A 4-1 to Aberdeen, who now top the Premier table. Resisted the temptation to bring back another former Ranger, Gordon DL. Rangers welcome back striker Ali McCoist after his five-month absence. And although goalkeeper Ali Maxwell began the game, he had to be replaced by Colin Scott at half-time because of a flu virus. The referee was Robert Orr from Kilbarkin. Commentator as usual, Jerry McNee. So it's the partnership of McCoy and Haitley back together again that uh, get the first ever Premier League meeting between these clubs underway. Rangers, in fact, bridging a 23-year gap. Uh, the last league visit here way back in the days of the old First Division was in season 69-70 and they lost by two goals to one. They won't want a repeat of that today. In fact, they were back here in Scottish Cup business a few years ago, 1989, and uh, only managed a 1-1 draw, so it's never been an easy venue for them. And the message from manager Walter Smith is to turn disappointment from midweek into determination. Played forward now by Presley. It's a good one to Ali McCoy East. And across comes Sean Dennis to make the challenge. But uh, Rangers getting a tremendous ovation from the supporters when they come onto the field this afternoon. There's Murray trying the shot. It breaks out now to Trevor Stephen. And that's well taken by Scott Thompson. It's uh, not a bad effort by Trevor Stephen, who has two goals to his credit so far this season. That's Will Bottom. They get through, but when drifting behind for the goal kick. And not the best of kick outs from Maxwell. This is Presley to Haustra. Good ball from Hausstrat to Trevor Stephen. McCoy's ahead of him. Hitley's there as well. It's Hitley! And just inches away from Mark Hitley, who has eight goals so far this season. It's a good play by Rangers. Good build-up. Uh, Trevor Stephen slotting the ball through. Nice little dummy there by Ali McCoy. And uh, Hitley's first-time effort not far away. And that's a free kick to Ray Thors. Rope off on there, fouled by Trevor Stephen. It's quickly taken by Nichols. Little touch on by Heatherson to Ali Graham. It is Jason Dare. Standing in the high one. Graham's up there with the header. It's off the bar. Well, terrific play by Ray Thors. 
Jason Dare standing high within and Ali Graham bought for £120,000 just a couple of weeks ago almost giving Wraith Rovers a lead well Rangers know they have a game in their hands this is Durant by Gary Stevens to Trevor Steven laid off by McCoy this is Ferguson that ball takes a deflection out of play for the throw to Rangers taken by Houstra to Murray it's aimed in at the head of Haitley punched away by the goalkeeper it's Trevor Steven well certainly plenty of incident in this match so far Ali Graham coming so close at the other end and uh, this one here Knocked down by the goalkeeper and uh, Trevor Stephen following through and not far away with this one. It's Goff's header. This is Stephen. Houstra wide. Houstra, well challenged by John McStay. John McStay having a good solid match. Certainly a powerful tackler and the Alta picks a powerful shot. Murray's throw, touch from Haitley. Murray's in there again looking for McCoy. Cross comes Robotham. And the overhead kick gives Rangers the throw in. Quickly taken to Ian Ferguson. Murray. Trevor Stephen. Ferguson. This is good play by Rangers. It's McCoy. And McCoy well challenged there, but the ball spins into the back of the net. 15 minutes gone, and Rangers take the lead. And Great Rovers can't quite believe it. It seems that Billy McCoy's would score. McCoy's turning there. And the attempted clearance there coming off Heatherson. It was McStay who cleared. The ball came off Heatherson for the on goal. Well, that's a real blow for Wraith Rovers who had been doing so well. Rangers again. It's Ian Ferguson! And it's a corner kick. Well, a tremendous shot by the Rangers midfielder. And the goalkeeper scrambling across. Powerful shot there and a good touch by Scott Thompson. Post round there, but uh, the ball goes right over his way. Plays it forward, that's a free kick against Presley. Carl on Graham. Presley, that's a bit careful. He's conceded a few free kicks already. And Maxwell getting his defence organised. It's Jimmy Nicholl, the player manager over the ball. And it's Haitley back helping in defence. Well, it's not properly cleared. This is Jason Dare. Meanwhile, Ali Graham is still on the ground, just on the six-yard line, the Rangers six-yard line, and the referee will halt the play here to allow some treatment. Well, the players haven't heard them, but uh, the whistle has gone. Well, Ali Graham having to leave the field. We'll wait over for just two, ten men for the moment. As the game restarts. German play by Trevor Stephen for Rangers, but uh, the pass not good enough. This is Dennis. Touch <laughs> <laughs> forward from Jimmy Nicholl. Presley's under pressure here. Leon from Maxwell. Nichols in there again. Gets in the early cross. And so close there for Colin Cameron. And he's taken a knock. And the ball has.
has gone behind for the goal kick. But good play by Jimmy Nicholl. Very determined play indeed. Sending the ball away out to the right. Chasing after it. Hitting the early cross into the near post. And Colin Cameron coming so close. header there and Richard Daw comes to Rangers rescue but some untidy defensive play this is Robotham good play by Robotham driving it through it's a terrific goal it's John McStay 28 minutes what a goal by Ray Robos what a goal by John McStay and jubilation among the Ray Robos fans well there's no doubt about it, Ray Robos deserved that goal. It was terrific play on the left by Jason Robotham. Getting well forward, tripping in the cross. And what a finish here from John McStay. Right into the roof of the net. It's Ray Robos won, Rangers won. Given away though to Neil Murray. It's a bad throw that by Ronnie Coyle. This is Trevor Stephen looking for Hatley in the far side. And the ball goes behind for the goal kick. Well, it was a slight play initially by Ronnie Coyle that allowed Trevor Stephen to step in, get the cross away to the far post. And Hatley was lurking there as ever with the downward header just past the post. Come Ray Brothers again. It's Heatherston to Cameron. Dears racing into the middle, and the ball just goes behind Jason Deer. Again, excellent play, and more applause from the home fans. Heatherston leading by example. Getting through here, he had Cameron running wide to his right, and then the cross was whipped in, falling just behind Jason Deer. Throw in two Ray Rovers. It's a minute of injury time. He's been played in this first half again. The referee checks his watch. Boyle plays a long one forward. Well, Mexico hasn't had a lot to do in the first half, but uh, the defenders in front of him have been kept extremely busy. And there goes the half-time whistle. Well, a splendid first half and a terrific first half, particularly by Ray Rovers. And uh, John McStay there, well, he was unlucky after 13 minutes. His attempted clearance came after a shot by Ali McCoy that came off Heatherson for an own goal. But then he responded magnificently after 28 minutes. Great play in the left by Robotham. He whipped in the cross, and there was McStay to send the ball into the roof of the net. The halftime score here, Wraith Rovers 1, Rangers 1. <laughs> So Wraith Rovers start the second half. And they'll be hoping to carry on where they left off for that very impressive first half performance. The Rangers trying to get forward. The Rangers have uh, made a change in actual fact. Uh, Colin Scott has come on for Ali Maxwell. A change of goalkeeper for Rangers. Nickel again. Head away by Presley. Made off by McCoy's to Durant. Looking for Hayfley, but that's a good challenge by Sean Dennis. And now Steve Crawford breaking forward. Still it's Crawford. Well, Presley was with him all the way. And very close to conceding a penalty kick. It's a great play by Crawford, the Terman play. Presley there, trying to hold them back, and they must have been coming very close here to conceding a penalty kick. Cleared upfield by Ronnie Coyle. Through to Jason Dare, who's onside. 
A little bit of space there. Plays it through our late. Uh, Heatherston almost making contact. It's away though by Trevor Stephen. Only as far as Nickel. Still the pressure on the Rangers defence. Plenty of players back though. Uh, Nickel losing out to Durant. This is Trevor Stephen. Surrounded by Rafe Rovers players. He keeps the cool head though. Does well. This is Ian Ferguson stabbing it through now to Housecraft. He watched by McGeeke. Still it's Housecraft. Good curl in that one. And well taken by Scott Thompson. Well, did a terrific bend in the ball there to Peter Housecraft. He did well to control it initially. He got away from McGeeke. And brought out the save from Scott Thompson. That's better play by Peter Housecraft. Rangers need more of that this afternoon. This is Housecraft for Rangers. He's shot with that one up. And Trevor Stephen, and it's Jimmy Nichols stepping in. And Trevor Stephen not at all happy with uh, Peter Houstra there, demonstrating with the Dutchman. This is Stephen. And uh, Jason Dare sending the ball out of play for the throw in. This is McCoyst. Good turn by McCoyst. Going away from the Geeky, taking on Sean Dennis, and uh, Dennis doing enough to block him. Well, what a game for Ali McCoy's comeback. Finding it mighty tough out there today, but that's better play by him, getting away from the Geeky initially, and Sean Dennis doing enough to block him there. This is Heatherston trying to get forward. That makes Gary Stevens. Still it's Heatherston. And not a bad effort by the Wraith Rovers captain. Well, determined play by him. And uh, he nutmegged Gary Stevens. Cut in past Richard Goff and let fly. This is Trevor Stephen. A long one for Hatley. Hatley trying to barge his way through. This is Trevor Stephen. And the ball goes behind for the goal kick. Well, some determined play by Hatley. And uh, Sean Dennis and Ronnie Coyle both going to meet him. And the ball eventually broke out to Trevor Stephen. He steadied himself there and had the shot at goal. Goff sticking in there against Cropper. This is Durant for Rangers. Looking for McCoy. He steps in, but uh, Ian Ferguson gets a touch for Rangers. This is Hatley driving a low one in. And it was Robot and clearing. And eventually away by McGeeke. Well, Hatley putting some real pressure on at last on the Wraith Rovers defenders. Driving the ball in low and hard. And it was Robotham who stepped in, and then McGeeke who made the clearance. This is Hatley to Durant. Gary Stevens has got a bit of space. This is Stevens. The, the offside flag has gone up. Well, Hatley colliding with Scott Thompson. The offside flag had gone up, in fact. The tempo's getting a bit frayed. Hitley's head up, looking for McCoyst. Well, even if not fully matched up, McCoy still carries a threat, but uh, well policed now. Well, the Wraith Rovers fans in full cry now, and they must take great heart from this performance this afternoon. Twenty seconds left on my watch, plus in injury time. This is Gary Stevens. Can Rangers snatch a dramatic winner? It seemed in it. Hatley McCoy's in there, and that's good handling by Scott Thompson under a lot of pressure. And the goalkeeper's taken a knock. But it was Gary Stevens sporting the long one forward. Hatley got the touchdown. McCoy swooped on it. And the goalkeeper came to meet him. Hatley climbing high there, getting a good touch. And then came McCoy. 
Uh, Scott Thompson came to meet him. Brave goalkeeping, good handling. Well, what a dream return that would have been for Ali McCoy. If he'd just got there a second earlier. So that's a minute of injury time played. And there goes the final whistle. Well, a terrific performance for Jimmy Nicholl and Wraith Rovers and Walter Smith very sporting there. But he can be well proud of his men this afternoon. A superb performance by the Premier Division newcomers. The final score here at Starts Park. Wraith Rovers 1, Rangers 1. Yep, so 1-1, one, one, Rovers picked up one yellow card. Afterwards, Jerry spoke to Rovers boss, Jimmy Nicholl. Jimmy, is that your best performance of the season so far? Uh, well, considering the start we had, yes, I mean, I was delighted again. Again, we've had to come back from a goal down, which is a wee bit unfortunate. Chuck McStay's tried to clear it and he's come off Peter Heatherston. Uh, then you tend to think, well, here we are against Rangers. So we, didn't, uh, we didn't start very well, I mean, uh, particularly myself in the middle of the park. Trevor Stephen and Ferguson were uh, knocking the ball away well, so I thought it was an uphill battle we gave ourselves. But they did, they came back into it and a good goal by Chuck McStay. At the end, defensively, they were a lot more determined, and uh, there was a lot of aerial stuff which I had to contend with, like Sean Dennis, George McGee, Ronnie Coyle at the back. Defensively, they, were, they played well, which was pleasing, but at the same time, uh, the first half particularly, I thought they'd done well. Yeah. Well, Jerry, you said it, you're absolutely right. Just seven minutes on the clock at Starks Park, and Wraith Rovers went ahead. Sean Dennis turned well and found Gordon Diel in space. And he crossed for Ali Graham to head past Bobby Geddes. Worse was to come for Killy. Sinclair passed to Jason Dare, who looked up, took aim, and fired home a beauty. But midway through the second half, the Killy fight back really got going. Tom Black knocked over a cross from the left, and Bobby Williamson headed past Scott Thompson. And before Rovers could recover from that, Killy were level. The same routine, really. This time it was Sean McSkimming who crossed from the left, and Mitchell headed home. The points shared, but Rovers must be wondering how they threw that two-goal lead away. After a frantic opening spell, Wraith's Sean Dennis decided to show his teammates how it should be done. Gathering the ball in his own half, he charged downfield, straight through the middle of the Hearts defence, before letting loose a shot which Nicky Walker tipped over. Dennis came about as close at the other end three minutes later. Good work on the edge of the box by Hearts' Tommy Harrison saw the ball finish at the feet of Justin Fashionu, and his effort spun off Dennis and dropped behind for a corner with keeper Scott Thompson beaten. Wraith Rovers had a great chance to take the lead after 18 minutes. Gordon DL slipped the ball through to Ali Graham, who really should have done better. But the home fans had only four minutes to wait for a reason to celebrate. John McStay's free kick nodded down by Ali Graham to Peter Heatherston, who took his chance well. 1-0 to Wraith Rovers after 22 minutes, and that's how it stood at the break. Three minutes after the restart, Ian Ferguson, back on his old stamping ground, did well.